What's up everyone? This was an eventful start to the day. I got sent out to install this meter. I took the easy way out and pressed it, which I don't understand why you wouldn't nowadays. But yeah, I'll finish up that insulation, make it look nice. But anyways, I was sent out here to install this meter. And as I was cutting the lines apart, I heard a noise. And I'm like, what the heck's going on? And I saw a bunch of water start leaking down. And you can see this new inch and a half black pipe and shut off well. The chemical guys, chemicals were so strong that basically all the threads on the inside had just rotted and the only thing that kept this thing from falling was the corroded pieces of pipe that were just acting like a dam. Well, when I saw water leaking down, I literally came over here and, and I'm not joking when I say I just put my hand to it and it fell and of course it drained the whole freaking tower so now the AC is off to the whole building and this is a uh, Marley but as you can see from uh, what I've shot so far we're getting her filled up get her turned back on and everything will be right again So the cooling tower is finally done, or eh, close enough, I'd say it's 98% so, but we're at 400 gallons so far. I'm waiting now for that fill light to go out. I want to get a little bit more water in the basin before I turn on the condenser pumps and then get the chiller going. On this particular tower, they have these two screws right here, and that is for uh, air removal, and uh, they were they had quite a bit of air in them. I've already bled it, but yeah, just moving and grooving. Well, finished purging all the air, got all the water filled in the tower, getting the chiller back on. And there she goes. So this has a Corel, this is the master controller, and then each module, each module has its own controller. So, Compressor 1B, which is is running right now, and I have already confirmed that the transducers are accurate, and so is the superheat. Also, as I'm seeming to be accustomed to doing, I write in these panels. We have one compressor running over here as well. Picking on another compressor. That one right there.
1A, which is his front one, I recently replaced. she just kicked on so it's going to take a little while for her to steady out and get down to uh, what would be considered normal readings to me was the first one to turn on and the superheat is still only at 29.4 I would have thought it would have gone down by now but that's okay we'll give it some time and there it went all four are now running so the very last one staged originally they had the staging as uh, it would start with one and then go to two and it always wanted to start 1A uh, then 1B 2A 2B I then changed it to odd even so it'll start either 1A or 1B first and then go 2A or 2B depending on which one started first the last time it then gives each compressor a more even amount of starts versus the way it was set up before. This right down here is kind of a cool feature. So it's called a multi-flush and what it will do as a certain time every single day, it'll activate the solenoid and then it will flush some of the junk that has accumulated out. It works pretty well inside this bottom one here where it says condenser water in that is where the 30 mesh strainers are you have to remove all of this pull the end cap and the collar and then you pull the basket strainers out and clean them put them back in same thing with the evaporator over here this is the other side of it and they're also using a buffer tank here. Yeah, this compressor that I replaced, uh, she seems to be doing really, really well. Needs some more insulation, but eh, I'm not gonna lose sleep over it. Got my filter dryer. These multi-stacks are fairly easy to work on and understand. This is a very good chiller to begin because there are a lot of things that are very similar to other stuff that people have worked on, especially if you haven't worked on anything big, just because this is a 385,000 BTU scroll doesn't mean it's different than a four ton scroll. 49,000. It's still doing the same work. Still doing the same thing. You do have water on your condenser and evaporator. 
Right there is your braze plate heat exchanger, the evaporator. But at the end of the day, it's heat transfer. That's it. Nothing more, nothing less.